Steve Pagliuca called the other day, and I was saying to him, so how did, how did it feel signing a $300 million contract the other day? And we laughed about it, and I said, Steve, I'm sorry, I just can't relate to that, because mm -hmm. I still remember a number of years ago, 75 or whatever, going to Waller Brown's office, the owner of the Celtics, and it was crowded, so he said, come on, come on with me, and we went to the men's room. <laughs> and he said to me, Coos, what's it gonna take? And I said, Mr. Brown, I need $10,000. <laughs> he said, how about nine? And I said, you got a deal, Mr. Brown, and the rest is history and six champions. So from that humble, but I, $10,000, I, my last year, they told me I was the highest paid player in the year, in the league, I made 35000 and And I, I started, one of the proudest things, one of the things I'm most proud about is starting the Players yes. Association because that somehow has lent itself 60 years later in terms of the interaction between the players and the owners, Players Association, to guys signing $300 million contracts for five years of playing a child's game. So I celebrate that, really. I don't, I'm not sitting here, you know, mm -hmm. uh, pissed off as hell because they're making all that money and I didn't. I, I'm so pleased that I had a hand, I think, some in setting the table for this, and especially the, the Players Association, which they have worked together about as effectively mm -hmm. with ownership as any um, American sports uh, team. Did you know that when you were getting involved? Back oh then. no, no! I knew that we were playing <laughs> twenty-three f and uh, uh, exhibition games before the season. <laughs> We'd play a full college season before we started playing eighty-two or whatever it was, sixty-two, then eighty-two, whatever, you know. And that conditions were not harsh, certainly. And hey. We were just, you know, graduating college. Someone was willing to pay us anything to play a child's game for a living. Otherwise, we'd be selling effing insurance like everybody else. And who wanted to do that, you know? So, yes, I was, uh, we, but with all that said, we still needed a conduit, in my judgment. And I was the only one in the 50s, the only one, really, who was, who was putting asses in seats. But that only meant three or four or five thousand a game. It wasn't sellouts or anything. But I was the only one actually selling, and I was selling them for everybody else as well. So I knew I was the only one that they wouldn't retaliate against, or perhaps, you know. So, however, I covered my ass. I went to Walla Brown, who I had a great relationship with and sat down and said, Mr. Brown, look, you're the best owner in the league, you overpay all of us, but I feel we need representation at the table, and I don't want to do this without your blessing. And he literally gave me his blessing, because if he'd have said, Coos, I don't want you involved in this, I probably would not. I, we, had a, we had a good, solid relationship. I would have certainly taken that into consideration. But anyway, I did because I was the only one that, and I served as the first president for, what, eight years, and, and then I think Tommy got involved. Mm. Tommy Heinsohn took over for a year or two or three. Uh, so anyway, yes, that's one, as I said, other than having an exemplary uh, good life and career. And, you know, with all that said, 10,000, 35,000, I mean, I, I'm, I'm basically a, a farmer's son, you know. Uh, my needs never have been, but I'm, I'm kind of living in, I have more than what I might need in my family, and so I'm a happy camper. Uh, so, I'm, I'm so pleased that the group of us were able, as I said earlier, set the table for what now is the second most played sport in the world, because, you know, that's what's happened. The mm. sport has exploded. And as a result, 300 is generating enough income. And I bet if you could get behind closed doors, 
when the owners in the NBA sit around and split up their promotional dollars, even though football, baseball, I understand that, they're great, the football is the most popular and all this stuff, but basketball is the second most played sport in the world, has become, and I, it may overtake soccer, I don't know, soccer's number one, but it may overtake soccer, and as I say, when the owners sit around in the NBA, I bet they get more for their buck when they split up than any of the mm -hmm. other sports when they split up their promotional dollars, you know. So the, the NBA, uh, in other ways as well, uh, I think uh, have lived happily ever after with the NBA Players Association and conducted their negotiations in a way that they're able to afford three hundred million dollars for five years. I mean, it's, you can't you can't get your mind around it. Hello everyone, I spend a lot of time trying to get you guys nice videos, so please subscribe to this page, and please subscribe to my second page. The link to my second page is in the description section. Thank you.